This is Jonathan Kahn. We are in critical times. I've shared in the past that if we don't see revival in this period, the moral and spiritual and cultural fall of America will accelerate. We have not yet seen revival and the collapse is accelerating. At the end of January, my wife and I welcomed into the world our new baby son. The same week that he was born, the New York legislature passed a law to legalize the killing of a baby in its mother's womb up until the time of birth. To kill a baby up to the time of birth. Can you imagine such a thing? How evil is that? That's basic morality 101. To kill a child in its mother's womb is evil. To kill a child in its mother's womb up to the time of its birth is beyond evil. Check out online pictures of babies who have been aborted at any stage. But at that stage, it's gruesome. And I know it's gruesome. But it's not the pictures that are gruesome. It's the act of murder that is gruesome. The same governor who said, in effect, that conservatives were not welcome in the state of New York told the legislature he would not sign a bill unless they included this gruesome law. At his side when he said that was Hillary Clinton. Those of you who have read The Paradigm, you know the connection there. It's still in play. They passed the law, and as they legalized the killing of the unborn child up to the time of birth, they stood up, celebrated, as they legalized murder, and a gruesome murder. Some believers say politics, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which party, they're both the same. It's all corrupt. Well, politics, it's not the answer. And no party is, and no leader is. And parties can change overnight, and there may be issues that we agree with with one party and others we don't. But the idea that politics doesn't matter is false. The bill to kill unborn children up to birth was attempted to be passed for years. And the only reason it was not passed is because the Republicans were in majority in the legislature of New York. But they lost that majority, and that is why it is now legal to kill babies up to the time of birth. It does make a difference. Your vote does make a difference, even in state elections. Again, in future times, we don't know where the parties will be, but for now, it does make a difference. About two months before this took place, I shared a message called The Hosts of Baal, in which I spoke of the connection between New York, abortion, and that tower, or the towers, the World Trade Center. If you've read The Harbinger, you know that the World Trade Center is one of the nine harbingers in the biblical pattern of judgment. A tower represents a nation, a civilization, its height, and also its pride. It is the embodiment of the nation. The twin towers of the World Trade Center were built, of course, in New York. New York was the state that ushered in abortion in, on demand in America. The killing of children on demand was begun in New York. It began in New York in the year 1970. It was in that same year that the towers began to rise in New York, 1970. The legalization of abortion in America, this whole process was completed in 1973, when abortion on demand was legalized across the land. In 1973, the towers of the World Trade Center that were begun in 1970 were also completed. The hand that signed the document to begin the building of the towers was the same hand that signed the document that began the legalization of abortion in America. They stood, those towers stood for year for the years that it was legal to kill babies in America up until they were destroyed. And they were destroyed and replaced with One World Trade Center. Those of you who know the Harbinger know how much that tower is linked to defiance. The defiance of a nation against God, it's against its foundation, against in in, in the foundation of the towers there was defiance, in its dedication was defiance, in its building was defiance. In what happened after the Harbinger, the book came out concerning the President of the United States and that tower was defiance. The Harbingers have not stopped. Andrew Cuomo, the governor of New York, chose to be sworn into office inside that tower of defiance. And as New York pushed the nation to crossing the line concerning abortion originally, it is doing so again. When he caused that law to be passed, he ordered that the tower be lit up to celebrate this act of murder in the color pink. 
but it was appropriate. Pink is the color of the remains of slaughtered babies, along with blood red. You want to see evil? It is this. And you want to see the result of a culture that turns away from its biblical foundation? This is the fruit of it. This is ultimately the fruit of all of it. And it's spreading. Now Virginia, as I'm recording this, is seeking to pass a law with the governor's support to be able to kill babies also up to the point of birth, and people say even during birth. Following the lead of New York, Rhode Island and its governor seeking to legalize abortion up to birth. And for those of you who have read The Harbinger and The Paradigm, the central key is that as America falls away from God, it's following the pattern of ancient Israel in its fall away from God. And one of the signs in the fall of ancient Israel was the worship of the god Baal to whom they offered up their babies. We are watching that now same spirit. Andrew Cuomo said, this law is a victory for our progressive values. No, it wasn't. There is nothing progressive about killing babies unless you're a Nazi. It is regressive. It is a regression to pagan values, which is what happens when a civilization that has known God moves away from God, away from the Bible, as did ancient Israel. In the pagan world was abortion. In the pagan world was infanticide, where you could kill babies. We are basically there. In this last election, as in the paradigm, as is revealed, we're at a crossroad. We have never seen the country so divided in our lifetime. The culture war is not ultimately about politics or the economy or one's view of government or immigration or racism or poverty or anything else. I'm not speaking about that. Those issues are there. But they are not the core issue of the culture war. The ultimate core issue is the Word of God, is the way of God. It is ultimately spiritual. It's a war of one side that wants to completely overturn the nation's biblical Judeo-Christian foundation and those, the other side, that say, no, this is wrong. We must preserve it. That's why in the last Democratic National Convention, for the first time in history, it was literally a celebration of abortion brazen. Had they won, they promised to strike down every safeguard in place for decades concerning abortion, and that would have every American, no matter what they believe, personally funding and taking part by their funds in the killing of unborn children. In Europe, which tends to be uh, ahead of America in its fall, in, its, in apostasy from faith, for the most part, abortion is not legal past the early phase. But now America is moving to allow, allowing the killing of children to the point of their being born. Do you know what other nations do that? Communist China, Communist North Korea, does that say something? But see, they never had the foundation America had. And the Bible says, to whom much is given, much will be required. We are moving from abortion to infanticide. We are reverting to the sins of the pagan world, as Israel did. And it was this particular sin, the killing of babies, of children, that triggered the judgment of heaven upon that civilization of Israel in ancient times and its destruction. America is heading down an abyss of apostasy, of persecution, of judgment. Where are you going to stand when the time of testing comes, when it costs you to be a believer? We each must rise to the challenge, and we each must become stronger and bolder and more on fire for God. Not less, more. The dark, you've heard me say this, the dark, the dark is getting darker. It's time that the lights of God get brighter. There is much more to say about this, but for now I need to share this. In the paradigm, in the fall of ancient Israel, there was a reprieve given when an unlikely man, even a man who had not lived a godly life, despite his life, is used to slow down the fall, to oppose the killing of children, to give the nation and the people of God a reprieve. A window of time for the chance of revival. It's not about the man, it's not about politics, it's about revival. To return to God. But it was temporary. We have now witnessed the same thing. It's not about, again, any man or a party, but we now have a window of time. It is the chance for revival. If there is no revival, then America's fall will accelerate. And America's fall is accelerating. You see, there must be revival or there's no hope. We must each all the more fervently pray for revival. 
Be bold for revival. Be bold all the more for the gospel and no longer hold back the gospel. It's life or death. Open your mouth. Open your heart. Just as it is grossly immoral to kill a child in its mother's womb, it is also no less immoral to have the answer, to have salvation for a perishing world, a world under judgment, and to withhold it from those who are perishing to any soul. That is to deny life in a different womb, to deny the new birth and even the chance for eternal life. We have to open our mouths. We have to speak the gospel. We have to let the chips fall where they may speak the truth in love to all in one way or another to everyone in our lives. As for revival, I don't see it now, revival coming from Washington, D.C. I don't see it coming from New York. I don't see it coming from Hollywood. I don't see it coming as of yet. You cannot be dependent on others for revival. There's only one, there is one revival you can be sure of, you can guarantee. And that is the revival of you, of your life, your walk, your heart, and your devotion. That's where it's at. This is the one place you can be sure to see revival. You can guarantee it in your life. There is no revival if you're attached to the world. There is no revival without repentance, without change. Put away whatever you have to put away. Take up whatever you have to take up to your life. Seek the Lord and revival will come. As it is written, repent and turn again. That times of refreshing will come from the presence of the Lord. And may God have mercy on America. This is Jonathan Kahn. Shalom.